Hey, it's Chris Nichols here from the camera store. Welcome to May in Calgary. It has stopped snowing and raining. Yes, it did both today, but it's worth it because we're here to look at the brand new Leica T. This camera is luxury, it is class, but is it performance? We're gonna take a look today and see if it stacks up to its price tag. The Leica T, just take a look at this thing. It is beautiful, it is sexy, it is well built. Machine from a solid billet of aluminum and hand polished. It looks great, it actually feels great. You know, we were worried about the handle, but it actually fits really nice on your hand. I don't feel like it's gonna slip and it just looks fantastic. The camera's got a huge screen on the back. The Visiflex Finder, it's good. I do think it's bulky. It's the only design flaw I would see. It looks a little bit abrupt, but otherwise this camera is machined in a gorgeous fashion. What a fashion accessory. Minimalist is the key word today because this camera just has a shutter, a record button for movies, and two dials. But that's okay because you've got a huge screen on the back and it's all touch screen and you're going to rely on that. We're going to talk about that in just a bit and see how it performs. The other thing I want to talk about here, folks, is this strap. Now, this is my first thing that I'm not a huge fan of. It looks nice, but it's rubber. I suppose you could use it as a stabilization tool, you know, against your head. You could push it out and get a good stable uh, platform, but the rubber grabs your hair it's probably gonna be uncomfortable if it ever does get warm in Calgary anytime soon and it uses this very very slick secure kind of uh, mounting system but you need to bring a paper clip or a special like a key with you if you ever want to take it off and of course forget about putting any sort of accessory straps on now at the heart of this system, the most important feature as far as I'm concerned, the most innovative feature is this brand new TFT 3.7 inch screen. Now what's great about it is it's sharp, it's clear, and it's huge. And the whole back is just totally black. It's very reminiscent of a smartphone. You'd be forgiven for thinking that you were using a very advanced one here. But it's all touch screen and it's how you access the controls. And honestly, I actually found it very enjoyable and very easy to set up. Now the first thing you're going to notice about this screen, other than how beautiful and bright it is, is a very quick refresh rate, but also a very simplistic interface. I hit the top button here, this is my mode dial, program, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, and scene modes. At the bottom I've got a simple info button, I simply tap it to get more complex information, histogram, rule of thirds, and so on. But in the middle, this is the heart of the camera. Now I really like this, I've got a camera mode and I've also got a wrench mode. When I go into wrench mode, I I have access to the entire menu and it's almost in the form of apps. I can pick everything I want to do on the camera. But when I go back to the camera mode, this is great. I've got a plus button here. I can push it and I can add anything from the previous menu. Basically what it lets me do is almost set up apps that I would use on a regular basis. If I want to have white balance, ISO and autofocusing mode, I can simply add that, put it into my custom menu and have it as simple or as complex as I want. All right, I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk about a few things that I don't like about this camera. And there's gonna be more than just this. Don't get me wrong though, I, you know, it's an interesting love affair. I do love using and holding and shooting this camera, but there's some weird quirks. First off, the Visiflex. I've already said it's a little bit bulky. I don't find it's very streamlined, but also, although it's sharp, when you bring your eye up to it, it takes about half a second to kick in. Too slow for street shooting. Some other things as well, the autofocus, not great, it's basically last generation kind of technology. It's not gonna compete with the A6000, you know, or the GH4, or anything like that. The other thing, five frame per second shooting, we could do a lot better than that Leica. It's a 16 megapixel sensor. We talk about the sensor, nothing fancy there either. It doesn't have an aliasing filter, but it's not a new sensor, no high res. Still, we're gonna test it out. I'm sure the image quality would be great. But you know what I do love? traveling and I've never been to Colombia and apparently Nelly McClung's childhood house is now the Republican of Colombia consulate. So I'm going to open this gate and travel to Colombia. Honestly, I thought it'd be warmer and also I don't know who Nelly McClung is. I feel like I should know though. So this 1855 lens that I'm using right now from Leica, I'm sure it's sharp. It's not particularly fast. It's a 3.5 to 5.6 kit lens basically, although it's probably the most expensive kit lens on the planet. Close focusing ability, not that impressive actually, especially considering that there's no mirror here. I thought we'd be able to get closer. 
Now, of course, we are talking about a brand new lens mount, an entirely new system, and of course, that means not very many lenses. In fact, so far, we've just got the 18 to 56, which is a sharp, sharp Leica lens, but unfortunately, 3.5 to 5.6. The only other option you're gonna have is a decent 23 millimeter F2. Very sharp and very bright. But don't fret, if you're a Leica user already, you will be rewarded with the Leica M2 adapter T-mount. Now, this is great. We can put all our classic Leica lenses on on here. I brought a 35 F2 Cron. I can throw it on there and make those work as well. And Jordan and I were thinking about it. Why not the opportunity for a Metabone speed booster from like a R glass to the T-mount adapter? We've got the flange spacing. It would work really well. We hope to see that in the future. Now the playback menu is a little bit funky here. Here's one feature that I'm not a big fan of, image review. When we take a picture, you have to image review it. You can't turn it off. You can change the duration, but why not just add an option for none? Anyways, playback is a little bit funky. You gotta bring your finger up, and pull straight down in a slow fashion or the opposite, down to up. And that gets you into playback. You can see your shots, you can delete it, choose color RGB histogram, that's really nice if you need it. It's a little bit funny, and to get out of it, well, I guess you just click back. Now we're gonna talk about video on this Leica T, and again, I'm not too enthused because Leica has never been a big proponent of high quality video. Now that being said, you do get good 1080p video, but only 30 frames per second. But there's a complete lack of mic jack, there's a complete lack of headphone jack. I mean, you know, it's not like you're gonna machine new holes in this thing. So again, it looks like Leica's not putting a lot towards the video, and we tested it. The video is okay quality, but a little bit of rolling shutter, it's not great that way, and it's not the sharpest video either, so all in all, you're not gonna use this for cinema. That being said too, second time, the manual focus is pretty cool. You do get a nice assist, three times or six times punch in, but no peaking. So again guys, this is gonna be a dedicated stills camera, I'm sure. So my dials have decided to stop working altogether, but we'll make it work. You know, when we're talking about the dials too, I'm not a huge fan. They're, uh, they're hard to turn sometimes. I mean, you know, it, it's very, very flush with the body. You're not gonna accidentally turn them, but they're not the most sensitive things on the planet. And for this price point, I would like nicer. This camera is damn cold because it is entirely metal, and I don't mean heavy metal awesome like Moon Sorrow or Dragon Force or Manowar. I mean metal like solid aluminum. It's freezing cold. We're gonna go dip it in some hot coffee so that I can unfreeze my attached fingers from the body housing. All right, well warm coffee helps, and it gave us a good opportunity to test low light performance on the Leica T. You got a maximum ISO of 12,500, and looking at the shots here from 1600 upwards, you know, our final conclusion is this. It's good, but it's not great. I still feel cameras like the GH4 or the X-T1 are gonna do better at high ISO. The grain is very, very organic looking, which is a Leica trademark, and that's fantastic. But again, 1600, 3200, I wouldn't push it too far beyond there. Still, if you do need the extra light, you always have that handy flash. Okay, here's a big downside on this camera, especially as it's starting to get darker out here. I've switched to the 23mm f2 and I need it because there's no in-camera stabilizer on the Leica T. This camera is just begging for on-chip stabilization because we don't have great high ISO performance. It's getting darker out here and we don't want to push it to slow shutter speeds. It's a stable platform. The shutter's not too, you know, heavy hitting, but still. Now it does have a digital stabilizer, it's basically crap. I mean, you can't shoot higher than ISO 800, you gotta keep the shutter speed slow. You take a couple photos very quickly and then digitally mash them together, it's not a good solution. And video stabilizer, it's your basic pixel shift cropping technology. 
So we tried the Wi-Fi functionality. I've got an Android phone, doesn't work. You can only get the app for Apple phones. We tried it on Jordan's phone, couldn't make it work. I'm sure it's amazing when it does connect, but honestly, as a Wi-Fi package, it's not gonna blow you away. Now, battery life on the Leica T, not great. As to be expected, I mean, look at the size of that screen. And of course, they're Leica batteries, so I'm sure they're over $200 each, but this is cute. If I pull the battery release, the battery doesn't fall out on the ground, which is nice. Now don't rip it out like I did in the first place because you'll break the battery. What you do is push up gently and it pops right out. Very slick. So here's the funny thing. I know I've been belly aching all night about this camera, its quirks and all the things that it does wrong, but Here's the funny and amazing thing about the Leica T. Despite all these flaws, I love using the camera. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. I love that my fingers are frozen. I mean, image quality is decent. The, uh, the menu system with the touch screen implemented actually very well. And that app system, that adding apps that you want to use to control is exciting because you can see Leica very easily adding more features with firmware updates that you could then add in. It's a very innovative, very modern approach and that's refreshing for Leica. You know it's beautiful, you know it's sexy, and it's a luxurious camera. It's a Leica, of course, and all things considered, it's not that expensive for a Leica. But still, for a camera that's made in Portugal and Germany, I could buy this camera or with the money I could vacation to Portugal and Germany. Is it the best value for your money? Hell no. We know the Sony A6000, the Olympus OMD EM1, or even the Fuji X-T1 are way more affordable, way more capable, way more practical cameras. But you know what's interesting? You're gonna love the Leica T for its flaws. You're gonna like it for the stuff that it gets right. You're gonna hate this annoying strap, but in the end, you're still gonna love the camera. And there's a lot to be said for love. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon.